we are treating her for t not one, but two frozen shoulders. So she's got a left frozen shoulder, which is very old, and a right frozen shoulder, which is more recent. Now the left frozen shoulder is how many years? About eight. Eight years, and she hasn't really had much treatment on it. So I'm sort of the first person who's got my hands on it. And what we're trying to work on is range of movement on her left one and on her right, but there's a lot of things going on with both shoulders. On her left one, she's got, you know, capsulitis that's eight years old. She's got arthritis in it. She's got label tears. She's got rotator cuff tears. There's a lot of stuff going on there. But a bad MRI does not necessarily correlate to the patient's symptoms. So she doesn't have the really the pain from the rotator cuff tears. She's got weakness and stuff, but her pain is more about jamming and loss of range, which is the capsulitis part, where her tissues have tightened up so much that she's just sort of, they've got short and she's lost range. And she gets impingement from that. Whereas on the right one, which I'll show you in a minute, the pain is a little bit more acute. It's a little bit different. So the pain is, for her, more about the rotator cuff tears and less about the capsulitis part because it just doesn't have as much tightness in that one. She still gets impingement, um, but her pain is a little bit different. So we do sort of different things for both shoulders. But what we are doing for both of them is mobilization. Now, for all frozen shoulders, what I like working on is trying to get the capsule stretched out. Now for her at this stage, I can really get stuck into her. And she's, the other reason why is she's getting massage um, from her partner throughout the week. So I don't have to focus on that. I can just work on the mobility part and the strengthening part which allows her to, well, us to do more stuff in the treatment and get her to doing some more homework at home. So this caudal glide here is where I'm trying to stretch the bottom of the capsule in here to try and get her abduction range. Now, with her, she's only getting to sort of about 80 degrees and it stops. Now, that's not really painful for her. It's not really that sore. No, really. no. She's got impingement. Now, if I really crank that, I'll squash the tissues and she'll get sore. But she's not got that acute pain or rotator cuff pain from impingement. She's just got impingement because it just runs out of range. So the more I loosen that up and stretch that into there, I get more abduction. So we do this position here to get in and stretch that. And like I said, because she's down the track a little bit, I can get stuck in and loosen this up. Um, the other one we want to work on is doing an AP, and that's where we get a little bit of traction out. So I can pull her shoulder out a little bit here, and then traction just on the side of the joint, and anterior posterior glider through there. Just watching her pain levels on that. Remember this, with Joe, I've played around with her shoulder a little bit. I can afford to give her a little bit of stick, because the actual pain she gets is just stretching of tight tissue. It's not, you know, impingement, jamming pain, or stretching of structures that are torn, anything like that. It's going to make her worse. It actually makes her better. She, so even though it's a bit sore, she walks out of here going, oh, that feels better. That's relieved, you know. Um, and then if she does get a bit sore the next day, her exercises, which we'll show you in another video, her strengthening exercises, then actually relieve the pain again because she's doing muscle work, which helps with her blood flow and mobility and the support of those muscles activating gives her the pain relief. Um, so that's her AP glide. Now, we also want to get into external rotation. Now with Jo, her external rotation on this left shoulder is actually reasonably good. This is one of the biggest problems that people get is they don't have the external rotation with frozen shoulder. Now, if you don't have external rotation, you're not going to get above your head very well. So I always focus on external rotation first before I even worry about her internal rotation. Now, if you notice, her internal rotation that's pretty good. Okay, for a frozen shoulder, that's, and there's no pain with that. Yeah. Which you'll see on the next shoulder, it's way worse because of her rotator cuff tear. So with this one, I'm going to then slowly sneak her into a little bit of abduction. You okay at that point? Yeah. Now I'm just going to wind her back until we feel like yeah, there. Now what, is that the jamming pain? Good pain or bad pain? Where's that? Bad pain. So what I want to do is stay away from the bad pain. Okay, because we don't, there's no point doing that. Then I get to that point, and I'm going to glide her at that point. So we're trying to maximise how much capture stretch and mobility I can get through that joint. And it's almost like I'm sort of trying to get that joint pushed back in the sock a little bit more. I find with a lot of shoulders, not just frozen shoulders, is 
the ball moves anteriorly, especially with dislocated shoulders, and they lose that ability to go backwards. Now, if they don't have that ability to go backwards, they can't get above their head. So we try and stretch that that way, sitting at maximal range before bad pain. So when I do that, what's the pain? What's that feel that's like? Good. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's good. And that's that nice, good, oh, that's relieving pain, yeah. which is what we just play with and make sure we don't tip over the edge and go and push it too hard with this. So moving into there. Now, the other thing I can do is that way so that you can loosen up that way. And then I can move her into this position here where I can load her up and then wind her backwards into there. Now, as I, you'll find that if you, when people got a, there's the catch there, I can feel that little resistance there. If I then AP her, I can get a little bit more range. So I can actually get her externally rotating with less pain. I've just got to watch out how much abduction I do. Now, that gets a little bit tricky. So to make that a little bit easier on me and Joe, we use a seat belt. Now, when you use a seat belt, if you shuffle this way for me, Joe, you're going to have to pad her out because the belt pressure is just going to be too much. Now, the trick is make sure the belt is not on a front of her shoulder, it's on her arm because otherwise you're not going to be able to drag it into a posterior direction. So it can't be too far up under here, otherwise there's no point in that. It needs to be actually on the arm but not too far down the arm. So it's right on the edge there and the beauty about this is I can just gauge that AP glide with my foot now, almost like my foot on the accelerator if you like. And then I've blocked it here. So I can work out how much abduction I need to do here, saves my hands a bit, and I can wind up here and I can see, check that you're, you're okay with that? Now, now here, then I can play with this. I don't have to worry about the AP. I can just work out how much pressure I need there. So I've got a constant AP glide and then I can move. The mobilization is getting into her lateral rotation. And of course you can do this with internal rotation as well, like we'll show you with the right shoulder. And that just gives her a bit of security. It's quite nice, that sort of feeling. Just make sure you're not going through too much range because you'll get a bit of a burn on the belt. You feel like that, yeah. yeah? And this gives one mobility, gives her body experience of going backwards, gets that whole movement patterning better so she's accessing more range, those tissues, without having to do it herself. Therefore, when she starts doing her strengthening work, she's got a better ability at it. She does better at her strengthening. If she does better at her strengthening, she's going to get more long-term results and improvements in that shoulder. You okay with that? Yeah. So like I said, this shoulder is more about mobility. This shoulder is more about pain. Okay, so she struggles with some strengthening work on this one and more um, mobility work on this one, but they're both frozen shoulders. They're almost on the scans, they're exactly the same. It's just this one's fresher, if you like. Okay, and then the last one we do is flexion. So we do an AP glide and flexion. Now, sometimes this is really hard. If you've got someone who's got frozen shoulder and they're very acute, they're just like, they just can't go any further. At least with Joe I can get her here because she's so far down the track. In the acute phase it's, it's difficult because you can't really get the drive in there. Now, not saying you don't do physio in the you know, early stages of frozen shoulder, but it is a lot easier when they are in the thawing phase to get stuck in. Okay, so you may find that you're better with the physio in the thawing phase. Doesn't mean you can't start it in the freezing phase. It's just that you have to go quite careful with it and you may see them less frequently because they've just got to wait it out and there's a bit of time going on there. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. So again, what I'm doing, traction, AP glide, make sure I don't jam that shoulder, watch what she's doing, move her into flexion. It may look like I'm putting a lot of pressure through it. I'm not. I'm just getting my body on there to lock her in and control that. And when I lock her in like that and get all my sort of uh, contact around there, she feels more secure, she relaxes because I don't want her fighting me, but at the same time I don't want to be loading her up and pushing her too hard. Okay, so this is going to get her flexion. So as she goes into flexion, I'm posterior gliding, a little bit of traction, a little bit of moving out laterally as she goes through. I'm not con too concerned that she's going to an internal rotation at this point, because that's sort of what you do when you do abduction. Ideally what we'll get them doing is when they get better, see that block there, they can't get that lateral rotation. Ideally, we'll get them into that position there. So when they are in flexion, they're fully in lateral rotation, and then you've got your full range. So it's a traction, AP glide with flexion, and like I said, keeping in contact with your body, 
and that's going to be really helpful with her range. Just be careful when it comes back. And you're only going to make little gains, but little gains are huge in this in with frozen shoulders. You know, especially for a patient. You know, you might like for a therapist, you might go, "Oh, it's only a little bit of gain." They go, "Oh my god, this is so amazing," <laughs> because it's so much different than what they've had because they have it day, constantly day to day. So if you shuffle that way for me, Jane. Now the right shoulder. With the right shoulder, you notice the difference. Like I said, MRIs look the same. But look at that internal rotation. So that's just sort of that's just blocking. That's as far as she sort of wants to go. Now what? Pain, you feel that? Where do you feel that? Uh, up here. Okay, so she's got a ref, sort of referred pain. When they say it's sort of down the delta, this is this rotator cuff impingement, sending pain down, referred pain into that sort of region there. Where hers, her other one was bang right up in there, where she just gets jamming into the shoulder joint. So with this one, you'll see if she's got way better lateral rotation, way better flexion. And, but her internal rotation is, is a bit poor through here. So we want to work on this way, same sort of thing. And I might just rotate it in a bit so to get that rotation and then get into this position here, which is almost like a sleeper stretch, but they tend to work on with trying to get their range. you just got to be careful, again, with pressure through the bicep tendon in the front, because sometimes people are a bit tender in the front of that. Yeah, okay with that? That's good. <laughs> yeah. So again, we're trying to get her range, you know, while I've got her on the table working on her mobility, I'm trying to get her internal rotation range on her right just as much as her external on her left and trying to work on that. And you'll find that once you get that moving better, then you can go straight into your strengthening work and it's really successful once they're loosened up. And she's going to have a massage in a couple of days, which will be really helpful to try and relieve it again. If it tightens up, especially after a bit of treatment the next day, 24 hours, 48 hours, and then a bit of rehab, she might tighten up again. The massage will relieve it, keeps her going, keeps her on board, keeps her pushing forward. Because these things, as much as you loosen them up, they want to recoil. You know, it's like a, a wound up spring. You know, you've got to keep trying to stretch it out and eventually, it'll get there. So, just to recap, remember, she's through her thawing phase on both of them. Okay, she's through that. She's way past it. She's two, through two or three years here, eight years here. She's past the thawing phase. So, I can push her hard. It's a little bit different than a normal acute frozen shoulder, but I'm just trying to show you the range of movement differences and what can happen if you don't sort it out. Now, this is the reason why we get people... <laughs> into physio for frozen shoulders, otherwise it stays bad for ages. And she just has pain every day, and so we're trying to get her out of that. So let's have a look at that range of movement. So Joe, let me get that bed down. If you have a stand again. So you know the other interesting thing was when I when I first treated Joe, she could, you know, hardly move her hands and she came in one day and said, oh I can put my hands on my hips now. And it's like that. Now, it's simple things like that that make a world of difference for these patients because if you look at that move and do that again, it's abduction. And so if you look at this range here, she didn't even have that sort of range. So if she only had this much abduction, she couldn't even put her hands on her hips. Now. So the fact that she can do that means she's got enough, and in fact, she's got more than that, which just makes life a little bit easier. Not that you have to put your hands on your hips, but <laughs> it's the little things that make a difference. Now, if you go into flexion for me, Joe, what I want to show you is what flexion she has and at that point she's sitting around about 150, 160 degrees and looks pretty similar. The difference is if she pushes this one, push this harder, what pain do you feel there? Oh, up here. Okay, so it's that downwards and push this one harder. Where's that pain? Oh, it's sort of in, inside. Okay, so this is the capsular jamming and this is the impingement rotator cuff stuff. Now you, that's more apparent when she comes into abduction. Now, if you go out into abduction with the right one, just the right oh, one, just the one. Show me what you got there. And that's sort of as far as she goes. So she's sitting a lot less at abduction, which is normal for impingement. Now, if you push that, where's the pain? Uh, go again. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, it's down. Okay, so again, that referred pain. So she's coming down. But you know that it's a, a jamming in the rotator cuff. Probably that tear is being stressed a little bit. And that's what we've got to be careful of. We've got to get overhead, but we've got to strengthen that, get that pattern of movement better. So when she comes up, she stops jamming. So there's a lot of things on the floor and movement pattern things that we need to do. It's not just strengthening the rotator cuff. For her, it's a lot of movement pattern. I'll show you that in another video with her strengthening. But if you look at this one, 
Away you go. See that range difference? So this is the captured restriction for the old, old, old rotator, old shoulder that's been frozen for so long she's just lost range. Now, she just, there's no pain there, right? Just stops. Yeah, just stops. Just stops, just doesn't want to go. Now, if she tries to push that, what happens? Oh, I just can't. Now, push it till it's pain. Go, go, go. Yeah. And then she gets some impingement pain. But again, it's not that referred stuff. It's sort of just no, it's in. jamming. It's yeah. just jamming in the joint. Okay, so next video, we'll show you a strengthening work. See you then.